You are Locked On Bears, your daily Chicago Bears podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's pretty clear to pretty much every Bears fan that it's time for Matt Nagy to go. But the conversation about pulling the plug on general manager Ryan Pace is a little less cut and dry. This is Locked On Bears, and I'm your host, Lauren Cox. I'm an analyst for Pro Football Focus, and I'm here to bring you your daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. You can follow me on Twitter at Cox Sports One. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On Bears. You can like Locked On Bears on Facebook. Join the Locked On Bears Facebook group for even more Bears talk. And make sure you're subscribed to the Locked On Bears YouTube channel to keep up with all of our video podcasts as well. On the show today, we really take a, a full look at Ryan Pace's tenure as general manager and kind of make the case for keeping him as the general manager moving forward, letting him pick another head coach, roll forward, build around Justin Fields and try and get this team back to contention. We'll make the case for firing him, case against keeping him, the case for why he hasn't done a good enough job and why the team should instead then look for a new general manager. And we'll kind of then wrap up looking a little bit more bigger picture and so go, sort of go through this idea that's out there about, you know, is he, is he getting better? Are we seeing improvement from the general manager and, and how much was, you know, the head coach and, and that situation holding his talent back from this bears roster? Like it seems to me like bears fans are, are pretty much, in agreement on on Matt Nagy, but the Ryan Pace discussion tends to be a little bit more back and forth because I think you can find solid arguments on both sides. It's not, I mean, with, with Nagy, the results are, are speaking fairly clearly for themselves and a lot of things that seem so directly attributable to coaching staff failures in terms of what they've done with the players that they've had. But you could look at this Bears roster and find a lot of things that, that Ryan Pace has done well, not only what they have right now, but just over his tenure since he took over in 2015. Particularly, I think we think about the, the, the draft steals come to mind, but really when you look at his draft classes as a whole, he tends to pretty much hit consistently on two picks. It's not always the top pick, but usually about two draft picks per class. So 2015, his first draft, Goldman in the second round, Amos in the fifth round, solid. Second draft, you get, I mean, you can... Start to pivot a little bit here, but Leonard Floyd, Cody Whitehair, yeah, you know, pretty pretty good. I mean, Kwiatkowski was a starter for the Raiders and then started some games for the Bears, but sort of in that conversation. Jordan Howard, still an NFL running back as well. So there's there's some there, but mainly Floyd and Whitehair in terms of guys that panned out to be starters. The following year, 2017, the Trubisky draft, Eddie Jackson, Tariq Cohen, both solid contributing NFL players. And certainly the jury not completely out on what Mitch Trubisky could still be as a right now a backup, but maybe looking to get back to starting. I mean, we're not going to get into that right this second, but like, you know, there's, there's still, still at least two solid starters from that class. Then 2018, you got Roquan Smith and James Daniels and Bilal Nichols is, is a starter. We maybe not as stellar as we thought right away, but still a, a quality player coming out of that draft class. Then 2019 is different because they didn't have a first or a second round pick. You still get David Montgomery in the third round, the rest, not so much, but it's a, a smaller sample size there. It's not quite a, a full draft class to really hold Ryan Pace to you know, needing to find two great players in, in the third through seventh round, not realistic there. Then you know, twenty twenty is and twenty twenty one are still very young players, but you got the likes of you know Jalen Johnson and Darnell Mooney really in that twenty twenty class, and now you know Fields, Jenkins, Borum looking pretty good, Khalil Herbert also looking pretty good. We saw flashes from Thomas Graham too, right? He, he's had some real hits in the draft, particularly in those you know fourth and fifth round type ranges where most other general managers don't tend to have that success. And generally speaking, no general manager is truly great in the draft. Every general manager has pretty bad draft misses, you know, some to, to larger degrees than others, certainly. But like, to, it's, it, Brian Pace, I think, is at, at worst, you know, average compared to other GMs in terms of some of the things he's been able to find in the draft. There's There's certainly frustrations there that we'll get to in a little bit. But like, even like, Mitch Trubisky, for example, right? You you can it's it's really easy to kill him for having a number two overall pick and failing. Sure, absolutely. But I will say that in 2017, it was at the time draft analysts and the draft community 
had talked about it being a quote unquote weak quarterback class. That, that's how it was perceived at that time. Obviously, Mahomes plays out differently, but more so when you if you take hindsight out of it and put yourself back into 2017, certainly, you know, I didn't have Mitch Trubisky as my top quarterback per se, but other people did. You know, other prominent NFL draft evaluators and, and other NFL teams also had Mitch Trubisky as their number one quarterback. It was not clear to anybody that Patrick Mahomes was going to be as phenomenal as he was. And so not to say that like, not to say Mitt Ryan Pace deserves zero blame for taking Mitch or that that's for, you know, excusable or whatever you want to call it more so to say that it, it could have been a number of GMs in that spot. And it was not like he went rogue and made some wild decision that no one was expecting Mitch Trubisky to be drafted that high. I mean, it, it was in the realm of possibility that any number of teams potentially could have considered. And so then you add on top of that, just, you know, more bigger picture. And Ryan Pace had a lot to clean up. When he came in, he was pick, cleaning up the mess of the, the Mark Tressman era. The defense was was pretty bad, gutted with, from a lot of that talent. And the offense was still sort of in transition as they moved out of the, the Jay Cutler era there. It was kind of rough. And, you know, he's, he, he was able to get some pretty solid free agents in there over the years. I mean, he built that 2018 Bears defense that was so good. I mean, almost every player in that lineup was brought in by Ryan Pace, not inherited from the previous general manager. I mean, it was pretty much just... Kyle Fuller, if I'm not mistaken, everyone else drafted or signed as free agents by Ryan Pace as the Bears general manager. And he deserves credit for that. And plus, we've sort of seen these gems that he's pulled out uh, sometimes out of nowhere. You know, Cameron Meredith as an undrafted free agent had a couple of good years. Bryce Callahan, Prince Mukamar was a fine free agent signing. Allen Robinson was a fine free agent signing. And then you get the young defensive lineman like Roy Robertson Harris, Nick Williams, Mario Edwards coming to Chicago playing well. You know, grabs Ha Ha Clinton Dix, Josh Sitton, some of these veterans that played well. And even this year, you know, Jason Peters off the street, Ryan Pace able to find him. You know, he was available for any team to sign. But Pace goes and gets him and, you know, clearly, I think, pays off to some degree for this Bears offensive line with Tevin Jenkins hurt. And now I think we're at the point where you got to give Pace credit for Robert Quinn working out too, right? As much as we were ready to kill Ryan Pace for Robert Quinn not being very good last season and looking like a monumental free agent bust, all of a sudden, He's your franchise leader in single season sacks. I mean, that again has to kind of reflect positively on the general manager. Like obviously it, it seems like the coaching staff has not been able to fully adapt to some of the talent that Ryan Pace has provided for them. You know, I mean, he certainly has free agent misses just like he does have draft misses, but again, every general manager has free agent misses. It's why it's kind of viewed as not a, solid team building strategy to purely just build through free agency. That's not what Ryan Pace does, but it's just to say that like that, that's sort of also partially what comes with the territory that yes, any GM, the bears bring in are, are going to have draft misses and free agent misses, but Ryan Pace has found some real gems in the draft and found some pretty solid free agents over the years. And it, it hasn't always felt like the coaching staff has been able to get the most out of the players that he has found. And you know, Ryan Pace isn't, picking those head coaches by himself. And certainly he's not able to do all the coaching by himself either. He can, he can only have so much of a, a influence on this bears teams, successes and failures. And then there has been a lot of positive that he has contributed, but there also has been a lot of negative. And there's also a pretty compelling arguments to, as to why he shouldn't be brought back as the Chicago bears general manager. And we'll make the case in the opposite way before kind of taking a, a bigger picture set back next on Locked On Bears. Hey, Bears fans, I want to tell you about an incredible new app for anyone basically who ever drives a car or anything with gasoline. It's called Get Upside. And listeners of Locked On Bears can get up to 25 cents cash back for every gallon you fill up, every time you fill up. You just download the free Get Upside app in the App Store or Google Play. Some people who drive a lot are making as much as two to $300 a month in cash back. And there's no catch. The cash back gets added right into your Get Upside account. And you can cash out literally anytime. You can do a direct deposit into your bank account. You can go through PayPal if you feel more comfortable, or even just cashing out to like e gift cards for Amazon and, and other online retailers. So download the free Get Upside app. And if you enter in our promo code TOUCHDOWN, they're going to give you a bonus 25 cents. So that is up to 50 cents per gallon cash back on your first tank. And then it's up to 25 cents for every tank after that. It's promo code TOUCHDOWN when you download the free Get Upside app in the App Store or Google Play. 
it's hard not to see the struggles that the Chicago Bears have this season as not being at least enough of a reflection on the general manager in addition to a reflection on the head coach. That it, it's this chicken and egg is, is, is the coaching staff not getting, enough ta- not, not getting enough out of the talent that the general manager provides the coaching staff or is the general manager not providing the coaching staff enough talent to be successful with, right? I mean, who and how and which direction do you give the blame? I, I tend to think it's not so black and white and that it, it can be, it can kind of be both. But I, I think it's important when we talk about Ryan Pace, right? It's kind of easy to say, oh, well, like, yeah, he's had some first round misses and some free agent misses and kind of kind of gloss over them when they're that far, when they're in the past in particular. But I think it's important to to make sure that we, we don't, you know, allow recency bias with some of those to, to help us forget how bad some of those decisions have been. Certainly in the NFL draft, right? Is a lot of those top 100 draft picks not not really playing out well. I mean, Kevin White, his first first round pick, you know, we, we, with each of these guys, we don't, I don't want to take the time to go through each pick and say, well, was it really Ryan's Pace's fault that Kevin White was injured all the time? No, but at the end of the day, it does reflect on the general manager. And the same thing with the Trubisky conversation, a few of these other guys. But like Kevin White in the first round, Ronis Grasso in the third round that season, a couple of top 100 picks that really didn't provide anything. Next draft was the Floyd Whitehair draft. We really sort of started to come together a little bit for him. But then you get Trubisky and Adam Shaheen, both top 50 picks, completely flailing out. Anthony Miller now looking like a bust later on in that draft process. You know, that whole 2019 draft after David Montgomery doesn't really get anything out of Riley Ridley. Duke Shelley, jury still out, but then Kareth White and Steven Denmark not getting a lot there. Not thrilled by what we've seen from Cole Komet so far, but we're starting to get into some of these modern, you know, these current players that the jury is definitely far, far from from out. On, or the jury is far from in, I guess. The jury is still out uh, on Cole Komet. He hasn't been everything the Bears want him to be just yet, but he's not, I'm not labeling him a bust yet. It's just been slow up to this point. But it, some some of those bigger first round picks in particular, first and second round picks ha- have weighed heavily on the Bears inability to draft that talent and really sort of develop it over time. Then, then you add in the free agents that he's done to try and supplement some of those draft failures. And those haven't all worked out either. Some very significant financial investments, but also I, th- I think the, the more frustrating thing with Ryan Pace in free agency is it's not it's not as specifically about the money all the time, but it's the guys he chooses to roll with as like plan A, right? Even if they're a relatively inexpensive free agent or a cheap, you know, value type signing, if they're still supposed to be the guy at that position or play some important role, it looks really bad in the general manager when that player does not plan out when that when that was clearly what his plan was, even if he didn't spend a lot of money on it. But let's let's you know let's not forget. You know, Pernell McPhee couldn't quite stay healthy enough to be the full impact that the Bears were hoping to get out of him as a free agent. Remember signing Antrell Roll at safety and him not really being able to be that guy. Wide receivers, Marcus Wheaton and and Kendall Wright and the inability to put any sort of real supporting cast around Mitch Trubisky in 2017. Plus, I mean, hello, the, the guy that we just saw playing for the New York Giants and absolutely embarrassing his franchise and like giving the Bears secondhand embarrassment that they even signed Mike Glenn and then paid him $35 million or whatever the guarantees were on that. Like that's, that's a pretty brutal one. I mean, Glennon, Foles, Dalton, three free agents slash you technically they traded for Nick Foles, three free agents that clearly were not the answer at quarterback when they were all to some extent hyped up to be some sort of answer, right? We, no one was expecting necessarily that, you know, Nick Foles or Andy Dalton was going to come in and be, the franchise long-term answer at quarterback, but they were all hyped as veterans that were, you know, experienced and would come in and write the ship and manage the game and lead this team to the playoffs, right? They were all brought in to try and help get this team to the playoffs. And none of the three were able to do that. And three swings at veteran quarterbacks, plus a, a swing at a rookie quarterback, number two overall pick, and then Justin Fields now to be determined. But like, there's a lot of swings at quarterbacks, not really working there for Ryan Pace, plus two swings at head coach now, clearly not working. And then you add in, I don't want to glaze, I, I, I try not to specifically gloss over any of the names to make sure that we're appropriately applying the weight, but Marcus Cooper at cornerback, 
Trey Burton at tight end, Deion Sims at tight end, the 10 tight ends that they always bring in and rotate behind these guys. And even you know, early in Ryan Pace's tenure when Zach Miller was the top guy and he kept you know having injury problems and they never really had good depth behind him or, or, or the 10 kickers and the kicker carousel or eight or whatever it was and all that. I mean, it's just sort of like embarrassing type stuff or, you know, Buster screen the slot. Jimmy Graham has been uh, uh, overpaid, even though he's been able to contribute better than some of the other guys on the list. Definitely. Um, limiting them financially in other ways as to why he's had to, you know, release guys like Kyle Fuller and, and Charles Leno and Bobby Massey and, and shed some real talent this off season that they weren't able to fully properly replace. You know, and then you go into this season with your plan a at cornerback being Kendall Vildor and Artie Burns alongside Jalen Johnson, right? In issues with the plan a at wide receivers in the past issues with plan a on the offensive line, not playing out. And plus then the tight end plan A's. I mean, like even if he's not spending big, big money, at the cornerback spot, just like the fact that he goes into the season with that as his plan and it doesn't work out reflects very poorly on the general manager's ability to build that roster. But I think it's particularly that the some of the misses have been critical, missing on three veteran quarterbacks and one rookie so far, plus two head coaches, like plus the first and second round picks. Like you need to hit on first round picks to find the true difference makers, right? It, it's it's fine and great that Ryan Pace has found quality starters in the late rounds, but none of them are like truly elite, right? I mean, like Darnell Mooney is very good and very exciting. He's not a, he's not an elite player. Maybe he can still get there, right? That's maybe not a best example, but like Adrian Amos, right? Solid starting NFL safety and very good for the Green Bay Packers. Not an elite difference maker. Like not, you know, there's nothing, he's not a dynamic game changing type player. Eddie Jackson, was that in 2018, but is not anymore. But for the most part, you know, the, the Bilal Nichols of the world and, and the Tariq Cohens of the world, right? They're very good players. And it's hard to find very good players in those rounds. But like to truly build a contending team, you need to draft those really special players that tend to pretty much only come in the first round and grow them themselves. Like I think that's why, that's one of the big reasons why the Bears have been, you know, that borderline contender and not like a true playoff team you know what I mean and they're not or not a true contender but a borderline playoff team is is that they they haven't had truly you know that one or two special difference making players that they that they've brought in and had have had you know truly like dynamic difference making like Eddie Jackson in like 2018 Cleo Mack and Eddie Jackson were, were were doing that for them and that's why they got to 12 and 4 but has not been sustainable for Eddie Jackson and really I guess sort of in a weird way, not sustainable for Cleo Mack. He's still been very good, but like you need, you need more than that. You need to have built more of a foundation of that, of your own young homegrown players with, because they're draft picks, then they're, they're lower salary, but you're still getting that high level performance. So you can add more around them. And that's, it's a big reason why the bears are sitting at six and 10 right now and missing the playoffs again, and really only had, had one trip to the playoffs or I guess two trips, but one season above 500 in Ryan Pace's tenure as a general manager and across multiple head coaches, the excuses start to run pretty thin after seven years, right? It's like fool me once, shame on me, fool me seven times. I, I'm just not sure. So that's that, that's where that's where the case to fire him starts to feel pretty strong. But but I do want to I do want to look at it from more of a, a big picture standpoint, prompted by uh, it's sort of a, a Bears fan discussion on Twitter that was sort of started in this same vein. Coming up next on Locked On Bears. Today's episode of Locked on Bears brought to you by our friends at betonline.ag, the number one place we recommend for all of your sports betting needs. And if you're looking ahead to Bears versus Vikings, right now the Bears are underdogs on the road. Bears plus two and a half to be determined on Kirk Cousins on the COVID-19 list, if he's going to be able to be back in time or not, or if they're going to start Sean Mannion or how that might work. I'm guessing given the line, they're expecting Kirk Cousins to be back, but you know, you, you never know. Certainly there's some weird stuff going on up in Minnesota, but Hey, betting on that game, especially over under set at 44 and a half is a great way to make a otherwise me this week, 18 game that much more exciting and bet online.ag is the top place we recommend. If you want to get in on the action, Sign up today for a free account and enter in our promo code Locked On, and they're going to give you a free 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. It's free money for you to play with and win at Bet Online, where the game starts. When I think about Ryan Pace as a whole, his tenure as general manager in the big picture, it, it feels to me like 
it's, it's almost a similar thing to the way we've talked about Justin Fields a little bit in that Ryan Pace seems to be able to do some of the difficult things really well as a general manager, like late round picks. Not very, he, he might be the best in the NFL at finding really good gems in the late round, certainly a top five GM in the fourth and fifth rounds of, of the draft. And even to some extent, we, like we said, some of those free agents have been the cheaper veterans late in the free agent process that. Every team has had an opportunity to sign, but for whatever reason, Ryan Pace identifies them and brings them in. And you take a guy who just comes in as a, a bench guy who's not really supposed to be anything, and then he becomes, you know, a, a, a Mario Edwards plays into a big salary contract, or a Roy Robertson Harris, you know, plays gets gets that next deal with the Jags, or or of course, you know, Jason Peters comes off the street. I mean, all those guys we talked about earlier, like he's been able to find cheap players in free agency that have played really, really well. And and not not every general manager can do that. At the same time, Ryan Pace also seems to to screw up the the less difficult things. I mean, I I don't want to call them easy. Like it's drafting in the first round is not easy. If it was easy, every general manager would be good at it, and most general managers are bad at it. But like you know, the the, the supposed it's supposed to be easier to hit on early draft picks and big money free agents than it is to hit on late round picks and cheap free agents, right? He he does the hard one better, and there's something to be said. There's there's, there's some real value that to that. But I can't help but feel like the less hard ones matter more, right? The, the early draft picks and the big money free agents, when you miss on those, it, it has a bigger impact on the team than finding late round picks and cheap free agents that have worked well, right? I think when we look at pace now in the context of 2021, it, it can be easy to get caught up in the unknowns and the young players that they have of, of, you know, there's, there's sort of hope for the future, but I think there's a, a sort of recency bias to this. And this, this, this kind of stemmed from a, a discussion that we had on Twitter the other day over the weekend about Ryan Pace. That I, I don't remember the, the Bears fans name in particular, but he was, he, he was under the, he had the opinion that, that Ryan Pace is, is getting better as a general manager and is showing improvement because of some of the young talent that they have on the roster right now. And I, I just, I, I think that's a little bit presumptuous to to really expect that much of the young talent to really pan out. Don't, don't get me wrong. Like the, the the draft picks this year have all shown a lot to really like Justin Fields, Tevin Jenkins, Larry Borum, Khalil Herbert, and even Thomas Graham and, and Kyrus Tonga, right? Like they've all had flashes and like, that's great. And I'm excited to see what they can do. But realistically speaking, the the probability tells us that not all of them will, will, pan out that well, as well as we might be excited for them. I mean, we, we, we can have the, the difficult conversation about Justin Fields for a second of just like, I mean, we, we don't know whether he's actually going to be good, right? I mean, we, we, we've seen flashes and we really like it. And there's a lot to like, right? Don't get me wrong. This is not like a, this is not an anti Justin Fields discussion, but we just, we just don't know. Right. I mean, we, we remember how we felt about Matt Nagy and, Mitch Trubisky after 2018, yes, there were, there were red flags along the way and it's not a one-to-one -one comparison, right? But it just goes to show that like, Hey, like just because a quarterback has shown us positive flashes that we can be excited about has not always been a pure indication that they are going to work out as well as we might want them to. And so like we can, we can give Ryan Pace credit for going up and trading for Justin Fields, a player that we all wanted him to go up and trade for, but I, I can't give him credit for that being for sure the perfect pick that's going to save the franchise with the franchise quarterback. It may, it may very well be still, but it's just more so that the jury's still out on a lot of those young players. And we don't know whether they're going to be as great and live up to the potential that we see in them now, or if things, things tend to change. Cause we've seen, you know, Anthony Miller have really bright flashes his first couple of seasons. You know, we we've seen, those moments from players. And then by year four, for whatever reason, they're just not able to take the next step. And so while I'm encouraged by the young players, the bears do have, uh, you, you know, you can't give Ryan pace credit for what they're going to be in the future just yet until we actually see them do it. Whereas, you know, you look back over the last seven seasons and, you know, the team is back to six wins right now, maybe seven, if they can beat the Vikings. And it, and it feels a little bit like, like, like why, why, why do we expect, all of a sudden now it should be different, right? You know, like we know about seven years of hits and misses along the way. And I, and I think that's kind of what, what Ryan Pace is as a general manager. And I'm not sure why we should expect, you know, all of a sudden this time 
he totally figured it out and nailed all the draft picks. And this time the free agents are all going to hit. And this, this next coach is going to be the one that he gets the right after, you know, not getting the first two coaches. Right. And you can, again, it's not purely his decision, but the organization as a whole. And like, and, and so now next year is going to be the year that it all sort of comes together. You know, I'm, I'm looking for sort of the, the, the why things are different from the seven years of the track record. And of course, each year and each team has its own identity and its own characteristics, but I just, I'm just not sure that we can trust it. And so then it's, it sort of becomes this question of like, if Ryan Pace is what he is at this point as a general manager and has the ups and the downs, how, how comfortable are you with that? And, you know, how well, how well can you live with those swings in both directions? And I, I feel like it's close to accepting mediocrity if you say, you know what, he's gotten us some good ones, so let's stick with it, right? I, 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 want, I want the standard and the expectation to be higher in Chicago for this team, right? In the same sense that, you know, Matt Nagy might finish this season 7-10, and 10, and that's really, you know, not that, I mean, it's not that far off from where he was the previous two seasons, and he did make the playoffs, you know, with an 8-8 eight and eight season, you know, just then. So, like, it's it's not that he's you know he he's he's still winning say, maybe seven games this season. It's not like the Bears finished you know four with four wins and a top five pick right. They're they're ascending at the end of this season, but we're not ready to keep Matt Nagy because we expect better. So why do we expect better from Matt Nagy and want better from the head coach and more wins as a result, and not then also want to expect better from Ryan Pace? That's that's where I think the issue becomes. And there's, there's a greater discussion to have here of like, okay, well, is the problem really George McCaskey and Ted Phillips at the top? And will a new general manager fix that? And that's a fair question to have. And one that we just can't, we could speculate until we're blue in the face, until the cows come home and whatever cliches you like to use, but we don't, we, we don't know for sure how those decisions are handled and what the bears are working on plan, maybe planning or working through behind the scenes and how they might want to structure the football side of the organization. Certainly if they provide it, if they make any big moves or provide us any information about that, you can be sure we'll break it all down for you right here on the locked on bears podcast. So make sure that you subscribe to keep up with all of our daily in-depth Chicago bears news and analysis. Thanks for making locked on bears. Your first listen today. If you're looking for a second podcast, listen or watch on our YouTube channel, how about Locked On Vikings from Luke Braun? Get yourself peeking ahead a little bit to the final Bears game and learn a little bit more about this opponent and the mess that they're in because that's another team. Things are very messy with Mike Zimmer and a head coach change looking perhaps more and more likely with him. So you can start peeking ahead that way. Of course, Locked On NFL, Locked On NFL Draft, Locked On Bets are national shows for you here on the Locked On Podcast Network. As the days and weeks come along here, we're going to start poking around at other potential head coaching candidates for the Bears as we expect change to come and we'll start to go a little bit more deep on some of them individually and I certainly I'll, I'll tease them better as I get them more concretely on the schedule but more of that to come crossover Thursday game plan on Friday and so much more so I hope you'll keep tuning back into Lockdown Bears and even as the season winds down and the team doesn't give you a lot I hope the podcast is here for you to make it that much easier to bear down